Okay, I'm going to begin with this disclaimer. I was originally going to include various Star Wars material and images of Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy, but one, I don't want to give Disney grounds to flag this video, and two, I can't stand looking at either one of them. So I'm just going to use a bunch of pictures that I've taken on my various park walks to, to hopefully keep me relatively calm while talking about The Last Jedi. There have been so many great videos and comments made about how bad this movie is that I'm not even going to attempt to try to rehash all of them. Uh, instead, try to bring up some other things that bother me about the movie. It's been over a month now since I've seen it, and it still gives me a profound sense of disillusionment and irritation, especially with all the dismissed criticisms, backpedaling, and excuses that are now coming from Ryan Johnson and Lucasfilm. I also want to address people who want to hold this movie on some kind of imagined lofty pedestal while shouting down the fans who absolutely and justifiably dislike this movie. And yes, we are fans. So many people like myself have loved Star Wars since the beginning. The bottom line is we helped establish the foundation of this brand. George Lucas and his team delivered a quality product in Star Wars or A New Hope as, as it's now known, rewarded our faith with The Empire Strikes Back, and admittedly borrowed from our loyalty bank with Return of the Jedi. And maybe because of that last one, it's why there's been a decline in the quality. But even with the Ewok movies and the prequels, I don't think he ever straight up disrespected the fans or intentionally ruined his characters. Plus, he allowed other authors and artists, etc. to contribute to the rich tapestry of his universe, building up the Star Wars story in extremely imaginative ways, which of course Disney has now pretty much dismissed. And granted, I didn't get into all of it, and I know it got a little bit convoluted, but I don't think it constantly contradicted itself or flat out destroyed the legacy. This movie leaves that tapestry in tatters. So, regarding the prequels... They didn't rape my childhood, as some people say. Even though I didn't like them, they still gave me some really great memories leading up to each film. I went to all three of the original celebrations, and it was just an amazing time. And they didn't ruin my love of Star Wars. Though the constant tweaking of the original trilogy did cool my interest for a time, and to this day I refused to buy the Blu-rays and sought out other versions like the Despecialized Editions and the versions put out by Adiwan, but if nothing else, the prequels gave us a multitude of really fun parodies like the Plinket Reviews, Robot Chicken, Family Guy. Uh, it allowed us to laugh and poke fun in a lighthearted way and be entertained. The Last Jedi seems like its own parody and it's not entertaining in any way possible. Now I did enjoy The Force Awakens the first time I saw it. It was entertaining. It didn't hold up for me on subsequent viewings, but it doesn't make me angry like The Last Jedi has managed to do. I can poke fun at The Force Awakens, or I can play the Han Solo drinking game and take a shot every time they say his name, which is like 11 or 13 times. I, 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 I can't remember for some reason. But you could tell J.J. Abrams actually loved Star Wars, especially Han Solo and Harrison Ford. Yes, he reverted the character to his original smuggler self, and gave him an unearned death, uh, which we never saw the real relationship between Han and Ben, his son, uh, to really give it an emotional weight, in my opinion. But I do think he had reverence for the character and genuinely tried to show respect to him. For good or bad, J.J. set up a multitude of plot points to be explored, which Ryan Johnson either ignored or destroyed. All of that has been detailed by, like I said, so many other great videos on YouTube. The idea that Johnson brilliantly broke the tired mold of Star Wars and reinvigorated the franchise, or however Kathleen Kennedy cultists want to spin it, is ludicrous. Ryan Johnson is not some great auteur, whatever you think about Brick, Looper, Breaking Bad, or whatever. Sure, he did interesting things with those, but they weren't works of some cinematic messiah. And he had to work with the framework of Breaking Bad's previously established plot threads and Vince Gilligan's overall game plan for Walter White's character arc. 
Do you think Vince really would have let Johnson completely take a left turn with Walt's character at the expense of the narrative just for a cheap laugh or shock value? Yeah, the Fly episode was a bit quirky, but it did fit with Walt's perfectionism and compulsiveness, which was one of his established character flaws. Ryan Johnson breaking established tropes, Star Wars rules, or however you want to label the elements of the previous Star Wars movies, is not like Jean-Luc Godard and the French New Wave of Cinema. If he didn't want to work within the framework, then he should never have signed on and certainly shouldn't have been allowed to do what he did with this movie. I'm sure Kathleen Kennedy wanted certain things done. The whole feminism thing, emasculating male characters, Space Leia, yada yada. But if he was willing to do it and be the whipping boy afterwards, then that's still on him. I remember hearing that George Lucas wanted David Lynch to direct Return of the Jedi. While people who love Lynch's work may think that was a good idea, can you really imagine how disconnected that would have been to the style and feel of the previous movies? It wasn't a good fit. David Lynch knew he would either have to toe the line and compromise whatever vision he had, or do what he does and face the consequences from either Lucas or most certainly the larger fan base. He realized he couldn't fit into the framework, so he stayed away. I admire and appreciate that decision. Johnson who is no David Lynch, however, was encouraged to break the so-called pattern and along with it ignore good script writing, logic, mostly in the name of subverting expectations. So let's talk about subverting expectations. What if Snoke just flat out killed Rey in the throne room? How's that for a shocking twist? There would have been such an uproar that the old white CGI guy in power just flat out destroyed her from all the people who defend Rey as not being a Mary Sue and complain about a lack of diversity in Star Wars. It would have subverted your expectations though, right? Oh, but that wouldn't have been fair, and how could they do that? And she's the hero. But it's okay to make Luke a jaded, cowardly hobo who wanted to kill his nephew and subvert the stodgy old male fan's expectations. And to that point, I've seen and read so many complaints about Luke's treatment by female fans, black fans, Asian fans, etc. If you are a fan of the original movies, you're a fan. I don't remember any division growing up along gender lines or color. That's all I'm going to say on that subject. How would you feel if Rey abandons the rebellion in episode 9? She decides since... She couldn't bring Kylo back and Luke wouldn't train her that eh, she's just done with the whole thing. That's not very satisfying, is it? Here's some possible ideas for subverting expectation that maybe wouldn't have angered people so much, provided more drama and fit into the overall framework. How about revealing Finn is actually a new clone trooper and Snoke invokes some kind of Order 66 kind of thing where Finn betrays the resistance? Maybe Kylo is unaware of the program and Hux has done it to, you know, stay in Snoke's good graces instead of doing that whole hyper tribe tracking whatever nonsense. You don't know how they're being followed until the end of the movie. Then Snoke uses that as leverage over Rey, that the friend she trusted set up the resistance, causing her to attack in anger like Luke did in Return of the Jedi. Or perhaps Finn is able to resist the order like Captain Rex in Clone Wars, but he has a tracking device inside of him that was previously unknown. When discovered, he sacrifices himself by leaving the Resistance for a whole different reason instead of just running away like before. How about instead of Space Leia, she's the one who force projects herself towards the end, stalling for time. Luke senses this and rushes to her aid via his X-Wing that we saw in the water on Octu, and you get one of those Lucas poetry rhymes, where his sister is the one thing that makes Luke snap and finally allows Kylo to finish what Vader started, which turns out to be turning Luke to the dark side. Then you get an actual confrontation between Kylo and Luke. They would have had the option to have Leia go into the coma like she did from the spacewalk, but make it a cliffhanger for episode 9. And since Carrie Fisher died, then they could have changed that in post-production to do the force fade out like Luke ended up doing. I know hindsight is twenty twenty, but the coma cliffhanger could still have been a good plot point for episode 9. It still shows that she was strong in the force, and it would have served the greater character arc of Kylo and Luke. I'm not I'm saying not this saying. is what I wanted or that these are great ideas, but it would possibly be a better way to surprise audiences and still fit into the previous framework of the trilogy movies, and possibly given more character depth to the old and the newer characters. Johnson and company are supposed to be professionals, and this complete misfire is the best they could come up with? 
if he honestly thinks he did the best job possible on The Last Jedi, then maybe he should seriously consider a new career path, or intern as a production assistant on a quality film project, which I know is becoming harder to find these days. My preference, though, would be that they just didn't piss all over Luke Skywalker, and instead show him as a true hero and Jedi Master. Not some disgruntled, flip-flopping, burning, not burning the Jedi books weirdo, floating in a lotus position, phoning in his action. The character, not Mark Hamill. Okay, I know many will probably disagree with this next point, but I will lay some of the blame on Mark Hamill. I know he was contractually obligated to be in this mess, but couldn't he have at least taken a stand on that milking scene, which was by far one of the worst things I've ever seen. This isn't John Waters' Pink Flamingos here. He couldn't have been forced to do that scene. If an actress doesn't want to do a topless scene in a movie, can you imagine the backlash, especially in this day and age, if the director made her? This scene served no point whatsoever other than to demean Luke in my opinion. You can do this sort of thing with Bruce Campbell's character in Ash vs. Evil Dead because his character is supposed to be a fool who gets into absurd and gross situations. It's been established over multiple films and now the series. Hamill could and should have said no to this. Outside of that, he has my complete support. As for the defenders who want to say that this shows how he survived on Octu along with spear fishing with a pole vault, doesn't that conflict with the whole vegan message done so poorly with Chewbacca and the Porgs? Have him pick berries with those stupid dark crystal nuns or forage for blue cabbage if you really feel compelled to show how he eats. Anyway, I thought he went there to die. Shouldn't he just starve himself to death? Wouldn't that be a more Zen, Buddhist, ascetic thing to do for those claiming that it was so Zen-like when he did the astral projection absorbing into the Force nonsense? He didn't say he went into exile like Obi-Wan or Yoda did. He said he went there to die. Many are saying how beautifully shot this movie was and that the cinematography was so gorgeous. Yes, helicopter flybys over islands of Ireland are beautiful. But it's not different or better than what you see on travel shows on the Travel Channel or Discovery. With a $200 million budget or whatever it was, it better look good, along with the special effects. Which, some of those I didn't think were that good, but I'm not going to even get into that. Unless the money is being siphoned off for the on-set catering, or they're buying a lot of snow cane, the cinematography should look good. But in this case, it's just lipstick on a pig. You can have the best wrapped Christmas box with a really ornate bow on top, but what difference does it make if the box is empty? If Ryan and company were really so confident in what they delivered, why do they feel the need to come out now with all kinds of explanations and justifications for the choices that they made? A great artist doesn't need to justify their work, right? It seems a lot of his responses to criticisms is to basically make it sound like he was the servant of the story. And as if it somehow wrote itself and he was merely making the best choices to serve it. The whole I was a vessel for the art that just flowed through me thing might be true with a live performance or spontaneous work of art. But it just doesn't work with a film that goes through multiple stages of production. He wrote the script. He made the choices. Or Kennedy did. Either way, they were conscious decisions. After this movie... I'm done with the new Star Wars, unless something drastically changes and there's a major course correction. I will not see Solo in theaters in May, and I have zero desire to see Episode 9. For those who have been disappointed, like me, don't give Disney your money. Don't see these movies in theaters. Don't buy the merchandise. Instead, make your own content, voicing your disdain. Hold them to a higher standard. And finally, for those of you who continue to espouse how great this movie is and deflect all the criticism regarding what many consider a subpar product, what is the tipping point for you? Where will you draw the line on the quality of these movies moving forward? How many plot holes, wasted plot points, character assassinations, or just lack of good character development will you tolerate before you say enough is enough? If you think that, hey, it's Star Wars, everything they do is great, or you continue to disregard the growing number of issues fully on display, why the hell should Disney and Lucasfilm bother to strive to make a great movie? If they know you'll accept anything, then why shouldn't they have Rey riding on a rescued father with a lightsaber horn, riding through space, able to ram First Order ships using some kind of force power hyperspace technique? Or better yet, 
How about a close-up of a farting ass with Star Wars tattooed across the cheeks for two and a half hours? And just like an idiocracy, if things continue this course, it would probably win all kinds of Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Screenplay. I know that's an extreme exaggeration, but just like with politics, education, and society in general, if we don't hold our leaders, the companies we buy things from, the media, and especially ourselves to a higher standard, what is the inevitable result? That's all I got. Thanks for listening.